All right, so it's 5.30. We'll call the meeting to order. And first up is the consent agenda. Uh, we don't have any minutes listed or any dates for the minutes, but we have uh, warrants AP2041, AP2041S, AP2042, and AP2042S. We have a Hadley Police Department promotional policy. We have a Asparagus Capital of the World proclamation by the select board, which I will pull out. And we have a North Hadley Sugar Shack on-premise liquor license confirmation of our previous vote. Uh, water or sewer and water commitment to be ratified and Hadley Police Department Special Police Officer appointments for Ethan Krause and Christian Lowell, which I assume that you would like to be pulled out. So moved. Second. All right, so let's do, um, Chief, did you wanna talk about the promotion or do you just wanna lump it in there? Um, the policy itself is it's more of a, a housekeeping issue. Okay. Um, something that we've gone through the union for we're you know we're struggling with supervision after uh, Sergeant Hart had left and with everything that's going on right now so uh, I wanted to enact a uh, acting supervisor some acting supervisor provisions um, and I wanted to just make sure that the town and the department have full control over the policy and that everything's kind of out in the open so okay policy you'll see that only the stuff in red is the adjustments and they're very minor they just give us a little bit more control over kind of an acting training policy okay so we pulled out asparagus capital uh proclamation and the appointments and everything else we have a motion in a second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. all right so i'll do the uh, actually you're here chief so let's do the appointments of ethan kraus and uh christian well okay um they're not they're not on here just because I'm sure if you uh, ask David and Jennifer, we've been kind of a pain in the butt with them as far as uh, getting stuff in on time uh, a lot going on. This is a process as well as the supervisory um, uh, policy that we literally started months ago. Uh, we're at a position we're in a position right now where we just can't sit on these things any longer, so uh, we we were we basically completed the process, and these are the two folks that uh, that we have selected. Uh, Ethan Krause um, resides in West Hatfield. He's a graduate of Frontier Regional. Uh, he has an associate's degree in criminal justice from GCC. He's as a security officer at Deerfield Academy, and he's also a corporal in the United States Marine Corps Reserve. Uh, he completed his basic reserve academy in March of 2019. Christian Lowell resides in Hardwick, graduate of Quabbin uh, regional High School. Um, in 2018, he attended the Reserve Police Academy where he was president of his class. He has been employed as a private security guard for G4S since September of 2019 and has also been a call force member of the Hardwick Fire Department since 2010. We will try not to hold that against him. Uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, so I would, uh, both, both of these candidates have uh, aspirations to become full-time police officers, so they fit all of the qualifications. They have all the necessary certifications to begin our field training process immediately. Uh, as you all know, uh, we have three individuals in the academy right now. The goal is to get them out because we need officers as, as much as, you know, we ever have uh, right now. So I would recommend that these two individuals be uh, appointed as special police officers so that we can begin their training. So moved. Welcome aboard. Hang on, yeah. oh, they, got they a second and vote. vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need a second. second. Zoom meetings don't change the rules, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> they don't? <laughs> I thought I could change the rules, Mike, no. Uh, it's worth a shot, I guess. I guess so, yes. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank hey, you. Hey, while we have Mike on, because I think he's probably doesn't have anything else, right, Mike? Uh, no, I just was going to hang around for a little bit to listen to some of the budget discussion, but uh, I had nothing to present or anything. Did you want to talk at all about, did you uh, end up signing the MOU or anything with the Board of Health at all? 
Uh, Dick actually responded to my email earlier today and said that he was going to sign it and get a copy of it here at some point. Uh, he may have dropped it off downstairs and maybe nobody called upstairs to tell me, but I have not yet seen it. Okay. Uh, I told him within the email that uh, he needed to, we needed to have a signed copy of that before we can, you know, assist in certain ways. So. Okay. So that's nothing that that's we, that's nothing that you want to mention right now. No, no, it's something that I hope we'll, we're not even going to have to use, <laughs> but okay. um, you know, we do need a, we do need a signature from him. So, um, but everything has been sent. Uh, he just, I think he just needs to speak with Mr. Mish, possibly Emma. I'm not sure how the quorum situation works with the board of health, but um, we do need their signatures on that document. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so next up is the proclamation naming Hadley, Massachusetts, the asparagus capital of the world. I'll go ahead and read it, it's not too long. Whereas the town of Hadley has a long history of agricultural production and is dedicated to preserving agriculture for the future. And whereas the farmers of the town of Hadley have been producing Hadley grass for more than 100 years. And whereas the town of Hadley has been blessed with a deep layer of sandy loam as part of the Connecticut River Valley, that has allowed our dedicated farming families to produce the best asparagus in the world. And whereas the town of Hadley is experiencing a resurgence in growing asparagus, and whereas the town of Hadley has over 100 acres of land producing the best asparagus. Now, therefore, we the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, declare that the town of Hadley is the asparagus capital of the world, given the sixth day of May in the year 2020. Hey, hey, yay. All right. So, so moved. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Well, thanks to Tom Moskevitz for bringing up that idea. So next up. All right, let's do uh, public comments. Does anybody here for public comments? Uh, Jennifer, do you want to unmute people one at a time or? Sure. Um, I'm going to start with Jane. Jane, do you have public comments? No, thank you. Just listening. Okay. I have a feeling Dan Zabdonic is here for, I have a feeling that Dan, Linda, the chief and Susan are all here for uh, the budget. Bill Dwyer, do you have public comments? No. Okay. Who is uh, Toshiba? Toshiba is not letting me unmute them, so I don't know who they are. Okay. Oh, there it is. Toshiba, do you have public comments? No, I do not. I'm here just to observe. Okay. And Paul from Kestrel, do you have public comments? Um, it's actually Kristen from Kestrel. Kristen, um, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, no, I'm here for an agenda item for the uh, Mount Holyoke Range. Okay, sorry, Kristen. That's okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. That's so everybody. No public comments. So we'll move on. Uh, let's do Kestrel Land Trust. Um, Let's see, David, do you want to talk for a minute about this? Are we ready to go forward with this at this point? Yes, so um, <clears throat> we've been in uh, conversation with the Conservation Commission, Paul Gagnon, uh, town attorney, about this. It seems like there are uh, several moving pieces, um, and uh, Conservation Commission has, had not, has not had a chance to take their official action, which is scheduled, I think, for the 12th of May. Uh, so I think we're in a position of just for the sake of um, adhering to the select board policy of uh, waiting for the Conservation Commission to take their action that we should defer this item until May 20th. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, Kristen, did you want to say anything while you were here? Um, no, I think that's fine. I, I'll just make you aware of the timeline. So uh, we we are still planning to close everything by June 30th, if possible. Um, we have the town watershed land 
uh, a landowner who chooses to be anonymous until they're ready to announce it. Um, and then we have a couple in South Hadley and one in Amherst, but anyway, it's all coming together as one. Uh, the Article 97 language that the Town of Hadley has approved is still making its way through the legislative process. Um, we have asked for an extension on the grant due to the pandemic delays, uh, but we have not heard back yet. So until further notice, we're trying to close everything by June 30th. So May 20th, I think is fine. Um, we don't want to extend it much longer though, if that's possible. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, how about the ambulance agreement, David? Are we gonna do that tonight or is that not ready? Uh, so the chief, uh, Chief uh, Spanknable, are you on board? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so we got a flurry of documents uh, late in the day today. Um, and so it may be that we do the official review and signing on um, on the 20th as well. Um, but it, uh, Chief, it sounds like you can talk to me, um, talk to us rather about the contours of uh, what we've worked out. I think it should be agreeable to everybody, but uh, if you could just run us through uh, where we are. Sure, so I sent out the, uh, the draft contract to the ambulance committee, I think yesterday, um, for review. It's pretty minor changes that we had discussed in our meeting. And then the additional items that came out, I had asked Mike Rowanka to update um, the prices for the next three fiscal years, uh, which represents a 2% increase rather than a 5.5%, which is quite nice um, per year. And then he also put together the document, which explains the payment options and then also the um, the subsidy return. So if we reach milestones, what that return would be for us. And then the other documents were just uh, the non-collusion form, uh, the state taxes, and all the other documents that were the, in the original one. So the only real changes are in that portion of the draft document. Um, and if the only addition that wasn't added in there is um, we had requested if uh, Molly Keegan would be willing to stay on the committee, we would just add an additional person under townsperson uh, to that committee and because we need to have one active representative from the select board as, as one of the members of the oversight committee. So that's the only portion that um, is not in there right now, which we'd like to add if possible, if Molly agrees. Is Molly willing to do that? You're, you're muted, Molly. Maybe that's yes. a response. <laughs> <laughs> no, as, as long as Mike thinks it's helpful, I'm happy to. I think the group's working well right now um, and there's some history there. So if the board's willing to add, obviously we need select board representation on the committee. I'd like to volunteer for that. That would be really appreciated because that kind of brings back the um, the original ambulance committee. <laughs> Task force. Was yeah. On that. So, you know, I think you guys have tasked us with over this next contract to start reviewing what direction we're going in. So it's nice to have folks that are, you know, already neck deep in it. Um, not that we can't add additional if folks want to come and attend, they're more than welcome to, uh, the oversight portion. However, when we review, uh, response numbers, there is some sensitive information that we would just have to keep sensitive. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, we're open to anybody being a part of it. Do we want to, uh, appoint you to that committee now, Joyce and, and Molly, uh, effective July 1st, or should we wait on that? That would be fine. Whoever actually would have to be when uh, elections take place, correct, Molly? While you're when you go off, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll move on, uh, David. If you could give the COVID nineteen update, and then we'll go into the tri board meeting. Okay. So the COVID nineteen update. Uh, everybody should be checking the daily situation reports at www.hadleyma.org. 
lots of resources there. Uh, Chief Bank Naval does a little a tremendous job updating that on a regular basis. Um, where are we? I'm sorry, I have some notes that I'm searching around for. Um, here we go. Um, so the Unified Command continues to work, meet bi-weekly. Um, uh, Hampshire County collectively seems to be doing a very good job of um, preventing the spread of the coronavirus. Our numbers are very favorable when compared to other counties in the Commonwealth. Um, the impact upon the uh, local economy is devastating, uh, and we'll be talking a little bit about that later on. Uh, I did receive information from the Community Development Block Grant Federal Emergency uh, Local Aid. Uh, our regional planning agency, the Pioneer Valley Planning uh, Commission, has received a $20 million allotment uh, to be distributed to the cities and towns in the Hampton and Hampshire County area. Uh, Molly and I will be talking to the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce about ideas about uh, what would be the best use for support of that money to support businesses. This is above and beyond the $550,000 uh, community development block grant application that we have submitted to support services to seniors and has housing re rehabilitation to qualifying homeowners in the town of Hadley. Okay, and uh, the state numbers say that as of close of business today, we're up to 33 confirmed cases in town. So not not a huge increase from last week. So we're kind of pretty steady. Yeah. Uh, all right, Chief, do you have anything to add for COVID-19 or are you just busy? Um, as we've said here at work, we're very happy to be on this side of 495 now instead of the other side. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so we'll go into the uh, tri board meeting. Um, let's see, select board, finance committee, school department. We're we meet to review and adjust the FY twenty one budget and annual town meeting warrant. So let's start with the uh, the warrant. We'll go through that. Uh, are we? This doesn't look like it shrunk that much. Are we going to take some of these items off, David? Yes, yeah, so I just got a message from the planning board that they're taking two or three of their planning board uh, articles off. So I, I haven't caught up to those notes, but okay. they've uh, taken off uh, Megan's way um, and the definitions. Okay. So articles 26 and 22 are going to be deferred to the fall. Okay. Are we... In our unified command, we had talked a little bit about, um, you know, what the what the plan was. Is Randy going to be joining us tonight, or is he? Who? Randy Iser. Um, I asked him to. Is he is he on board? I don't see him. So we can we can circle back to this, I guess. Yeah. Let's uh, move on to the budget. Uh, let me just give you an update as to um, uh, town meeting options. Um, there is a Senate bill which has just been approved, has not been enacted by the governor yet, uh, to allow cities and towns to reduce the quorum for their town meetings. Uh, there are conditions to the, those uh, that uh, reduction of quorum. Our quorum happens to be 100, and we could reduce it to as little as 10% of our required quorum. That would be 10 people. Uh, if we took that option, based upon my very quick reading of the Senate bill, we would have to pass only the budget and any other article which could not be uh, deferred until uh, uh, to July 1st. So we would be, if we took that option, we would be restricting our legislative actions to just nine articles at most on a 26 warrant article warrant. So this is something obviously we want to take a closer look at and look at the final uh, language when it gets enacted. 
um, but it is an option. I mean, it's going to be a very long special town meeting in the fall. Yeah. But I just have a question on that is uh, we could have a 10 person quorum, but that would we restrict the meeting to no more than 10 people. I mean, that would be the tricky part about it is we might have to plan still for 200 people, even though quorum, though quorum is 10. Yeah, the, um, the legislative bodies for municipalities are exempt from the 10 person restriction. So we don't have to worry about that part. I think the reduction in quorum is just in case, you know, we're sitting there on town meeting floor and we don't get the 100 people, we can vote at that point, right, with the select board and, and the moderator to reduce it to 10 people or whatever we'd like. Is that what you're thinking, David? Yeah, that's my thinking. Of course, we'll, we'll take a closer look at the requirements of the law, but uh, um, yeah, that's, that's an option. If we can't make quorum, that's one thing we can do is reduce the quorum, but it requires us to reduce the warrant. Yeah, and it basically means that the select board and the finance committee could just vote it, vote it through. Right? I mean, there's your 10 right there. Yeah. As long as they're registered voters. Yep. All right. Um, unless anybody else has anything on that for now, we'll move on to the budget talks. Um, David, do you want to kind of give us an idea of what you've done and then we can Let's hear from Set the table a little bit. Okay. So, um, you know, I've, I've said before that we've had to reduce our revenue estimates by over $800,000 for a combined total of a north of a million two and in, in, uh, going to the shortfall in the budget. I have balanced the budget. Uh, we did have a very long conversation with Sean Crony, Crony rather, the uh, Deputy Director of the Division of Local Services about FY 2020 and FY 2021. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty all over the place at the state level. Uh, people are trying to uh, put things together. What came out of our discussion is, is that you need to have a plan for dealing whatever may come your way. And the budget narrative that I put together for this revised budget, um, I emphasize defense in depth, and that is our plan. This is not just a slogan, but it is a plan which is uh, multi-year, adaptable, flexible, can it be changed to address whatever may come, takes into account the revised downward revenue figures, relies on a progression of backstops, reinforcing backstops, reinforcing reserves with free cash and other special uh, funds. Um, and uh, it, um, it is the basis by which I have balanced this budget. One of the things that we talked about was the impact upon the tax rate. Uh, there are lots of variables that go into ma making the tax rate uh, right now, and I think Dan Zidonic is on the line somewhere here. We're looking at an uh, increase of valuation for all classes of residential. Um, that will help us in either keeping the tax rate stable or even reducing that tax rate, but that's something we need to work on for the fall town meeting. Uh, and there are a million variables that we need to adjust. So there's a certain amount of finesse that needs to go into that. So careful planning to achieve the goal of uh, keeping the tax burden as, as little as possible and also thinking long-term to avoid giant tax increases for FY 2022. Uh, we will definitely need to go to a two-town meeting progression to achieve these budgetary um, uh, budgetary feats. I have outlined what those uh, town meetings for the next two years might look like and how to use uh, reserves judiciously as well as building stabilization for future use. Um, 
We've had to adjust all the goals that the select board set out in order to originally set up the FY21 budget. And that's mm -hmm. outlined in the budget narrative. We can achieve some of these goals, but in many cases, we've gone to of actively expanding the government to now we're in a defensive crouch. Uh, the only other issue that uh, we're still trying to wrestle with is the OPEB contribution. I had originally cut that to zero. Uh, I'm now trying to scrape together whatever money I can in order to contribute at least something so that we can uh, be building our OPEB uh, um, contribution for the long term because that'll pay off dividends for future taxpayers. Okay. Well then, uh, let's open it up to the finance committee. Uh, what are your What are your thoughts? Uh, have you had a chance to look at this, and what do you think? I know you guys met last night. Yeah, so we met last night, and we had um, gone over uh, the the um, lot of expenses. We went through nine items. Um, yeah, I would like to keep the tax rate. Um, the same, if possible, I just don't know, you know, so we really went and our main focus last night was to see, because we do need to balance it and to see where all the line items are. Um, David did a great job on, on, the bat, on the budget, but there were a few questions in there um, that we had that we thought we, there could be so that we could talk about. Um, one of the things was that the um, we would like to see it would be great to have a hiring increase. Like right now, not hiring any new people, new hours, keep everything the same. We don't want to see anybody be let go, um, but we want to. We don't want to add anymore at this point. Um, we don't want to. Um, uh, we were hoping not to do any more than 2%. If we can even do the 2%, you know, but it'd be nice to just do 2% across the board, which then it's gonna, we're gonna be having to ask for help from um, both um, Ed and from um, Dave Nixon to see if if it's, if it's agreeable with the select board. I'd like, uh, and to reach out to all the con people that have the contracts and everyone that has the union negotiations, you know, they can do the union negotiation. And I'd like to see if they <coughs> could talk to the union and say, you know, during this time, we would be happy not to be letting anybody go. So to have a big increase right now, they would, might be acceptable to that to say let's push this off the year so that we could do a 2% across the board and not have those other increases. Um, that would be very, very helpful. Um, I, I, that's one thing I, we also wanted to discuss with the select board. Um, we are not in um, just for a couple other places where we'd be saving money. So not really in favor of um, adding the extra for the HR. I, I think that would be a place where we could, we've been doing it for years and years. <laughs> there are some good arguments, but at the same time, we have been doing this for a long time um, with, and it made it through. So I think we could still make it through again um, and save that money and put that into OPEB. I think we could also do and push off the planner same thing. I think that it's a good idea. I think we could be, make, you know, it could help down the road, but I think we could push it off. I think funding OPEB would be a smart move because, and not all of it, but to show something in there. I've been watching it on the news as well, where they are looking for, you know, um, the government's looking to help out in another phase and to help out the towns and stuff, but they don't want to help out towns it, for bad um, management in the past. They don't want to help people with their with their pension uh, funds and stuff like that. And if we show that we're still adding to those pensions and we show all the good 
things that we're doing with a AAA bond rating, I think we would have a better chance on, on getting any type of funding. And we could show that we are really in the ones that are in need of that funding due to the hotels. And the, um, it is really, the, it's totally just the corona uh, virus that is, is hurting us in, in the revenues right now. And it's really that those, those people that can't pay the taxes and they can't, the, in the hotels and the meals tax, I mean, that's a huge thing. Um, the um, we did the only real increases where I want to see the increases. You know, we wanted to put more money into the um, keep that uh, finance reserve um, larger. Just because if you need whichever department ends up falling short, we could just transfer it without town meeting approval. So as long as we have a, a good amount in there the transfer to help whichever place ended up needing it. Also, we wanted to keep that money going towards the, um, for paying down principal and debt, so that way if any capital items comes up and we absolutely need it, we could pay for it out of that borrow right now. So um, that is a good thing. Um, what was the amount uh, you wanted to just, keep into the finance? Uh, uh, side note, just quickly, I did want to uh, mention, I did also deal with CPA. I had a CPA meeting on Monday, um, and the CPA monies, um, right now, the only thing that they could really do would be to um, help with rents people's rent, and that's only for your people that are the um, the low moderate income. It's, it's for that type of housing. Um, but instead of doing it that way, we feel that the CPA, because we have the monies um, going to be going, and, and maybe Bill could talk more on that down the road, we'll be having monies going into the um, trust funds, uh, the housing trust fund, because that's what they're looking at putting on in the warrant. So keep into the finance. Oh, for, for what, the rent? I mean, I'm, for the CPA you're talking? Oh, 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 the finance reserves is what you're asking. Um, the finance reserves is right now, I think it is at um, 75000 Um if we can put more, that would be great, but I don't know. But that's where, when we're making little adjustments, I'd rather see them come out of some other area, put more into there for when, you know, to move it around, to keep it more liquid. How much um, more would you want? One of the want? places, you know, down the road, I would like to see to increase it a little bit more is in the warrant. We also are mentioning we're going to put 25000 into the unemployment. I would like that instead of going on unemployment, go into the finance. That way, if the unemployment needs it, we move it to unemployment. But if they don't need it and someone else needs it, you can move it there too. So that was just my thought to keep it more liquid. Um, because once it's in unemployment, I can't move it back out to give it to someone else if they don't need it. Um, so uh, those are just a few thoughts. Oh, and so the, the money is to help the town uh, instead of CP, going through CPA, we could probably go through the planning board as trustees for the affordable housing trust, if that's something that's down the road that's needed. But that's not part of this budget, but I know it's something that has been talked about. Um, I think that, oh, I do have a few other things that I um, wanted to mention where we could. Uh, I think the 25,000 to move that would be over would be good. That would give the finance, and, and, and I, maybe you have another opinion. I was at housing in there. We've only had 50. We don't usually use it. But, I mean, I, I just, there is, there's so much uncertainty. I don't know. I, I, so in my, I'm thinking 100, but um, I'm open to suggestions, whatever everyone else feels. Um, well, if we're not we, laying uh, any... If we're not uh, laying we any, we might need to have some increases in the town building operations. Not positive, but still being tweaked. Um, 
uh, this is just one more thing I thought of that I, I didn't mention uh, yesterday was I would like to see, I know we have a grant for the Council on Aging, um, and that has to do with we're hiring more drivers and we're, hi we're doing more things and it's a matching grant, um, which is great, but that would be great if we could put that off a year and not do it this year. Um, I just don't see this year, you know, a lot of seniors probably getting into these kinds of vans and going to places. If, if we could just put it off a year, I think that would be pretty helpful. Um, and, um, so that would be that. And since since um, the uh, Chief Mason is here on this call, um, I, I, there was a question on the hot Say again, Joyce. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, catch it. So the only question I was going to have for Chief Mason was we talked on when we were looking at the budget, there was a, a line item for canine unit. And I wanted to ask him if that is still going on or if that's something that would be down the road. I, and I didn't know. So I just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, the, you, for the, the line Chief item Mason, the specific. I don't know if yeah. you caught that. Um, if um, the, your canine unit. Is, do you, is that something that's still pending? The no. specific line item that you're talking he about. Me. The um, um, the so old accountant. Yeah, you're, you're on, on mute, Chief. I'm gonna Mason, if, no. No. Okay. He's not on mute. He's so on mute now. That's what I have right now. If anybody else would like to um, chime in. So, Paul or. Can I? Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, Chief. I didn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Well, it must be uh, a poor connection that seems to be about a minute behind everybody else. So unfortunately, so. Amy says. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because Mike was trying to talk, but uh, she kept getting in there. Yeah. So yep. he, he couldn't respond to her her answer. Do you have an answer for her, Mike? Yeah, I was actually just going to type it out. So I think maybe she'll get that before she gets my voice. But um, the 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 canine program is still going to happen. Uh, as soon as we graduate the three officers from the academy, we can't afford to lose another one right now to the canine training. But the account number that she is talking about, for whatever reason, I still don't know why. Justin, uh, the past accountant when he was here, for some reason added the two, uh, a letter and a number K9 to our full police supply line. I don't know why he did it. It doesn't have anything to do with K9. That money is basically all of the supplies for this whole building. Um, but it's not a K9 line. So uh, I hope that answers your question. I'll, I'll try to type into here so that I can be a little bit more specific. Okay. Everybody else hear that at least? Yes. Yep. Right. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So is this for David? I want to ask about the uh, $28,000 taken from the building maintenance account for fire. Uh, yes. this is, okay, so this is uh, which budget are we talking about? We're talking about uh, you moved it from uh, fire to uh, maintenance 490. Yep. And I thought we had talked about this previously that Mike needs that in his budget to take care of the fire alarms, the sprinklers, the generator monitoring and other things for public safety. So that money was going to stay in the fire department budget. And then you moved it to the building maintenance, which has really nothing to do with any of these things at all. Do I move it to building maintenance or building operations? Uh, to, to, it's 490, so whatever that is. That's building maintenance. Maintenance. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, so that should go back into Mike's budget for his fire alarms and sprinklers and generator monitoring. And he does that for throughout the town. So um, that money should go back. DPW is not going to monitor all those things. That needs to be in his budget. Hello. I heard you. <laughs> do I need to come through the line and do CPR? How are we there? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I was I was up front with everybody before 
beforehand that uh, I was trying to get as many of these uh, responsibilities for building operations and building maintenance out of the department heads hands and into a consolidated budget. Uh, but so again, but again, DPW doesn't monitor these things, so it shouldn't be in their budget. That's not under their purview. They don't have a clue on what's going on with these fire alarms and sprinklers and things. So that should actually please go back into the fire department's budget. Uh, well, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to make a motion. It goes back into the fire department. He can't monitor these things from under the DPW. That's a motion. Anybody want to second it? Oh, hang on, Mike, is that um, Chief Spanknabel? Yes, uh, actually, Dave, we, we met with Chris Okafer multiple times on this, and we were all in agreement that um, all of this was, so this is the fire alarm monitoring, the sprinkler system monitoring, the generators for all the buildings in the town of Hadley. It's not just the fire station. Um, this includes all, all buildings. So that's why there was that increase. I was tasked with putting that, that budget together and getting the proposals from um, estimates from the uh, the contractor that's doing the new buildings. Uh, so that's that's why we were keeping it under the fire department account, including the the generator. And Mike, is it common practice? And this is just a question: Would it be common practice for the fire department to be responsible for the upkeep of those items? Well, we're the ones that do the annual inspections on it, and we originally only the public safety complex had a sprinkler system in it. So we've now added sprinkler systems to three additional buildings or yeah, the North station, the library and the senior center are, are all sprinkler now. So mm -hmm. all of those are, you know, it's under fire regulation and fire law for maintaining that. Um, so the other reason why we did it is we are attempting to move the monitoring of the fire alarm systems into our dispatch center as well so that we can reduce the cost of having to pay a third party uh, UL listed central station to do that monitoring. We were also, um, you know, we had probably four or five different companies uh, maintaining, inspecting, testing, and monitoring the different buildings in town at one point. So it's, it's taken a number of years to get this so that we're, you know, the, the town hall, the DPW, those systems were upgraded. Uh, now we have similar equipment and we're working towards being able to actually monitor ourselves. So it's, it's um, I, I, again, we met with Chris Okafer on this um, a couple of times and it was, you know, agreed upon by all of us that this is something that really should be monitored and maintained because those are, you know, they're contracts and we need to make sure that they're being taken care of. Um, so that's why that happened. That way. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So my, my comment right now is, is that, you know, this is going to be an, this is going to be an expense neutral transfer, so it doesn't affect the bottom line. Um, uh, one of the things that we should do, to, uh, I recommend that we do tonight is set up a process by which these department heads can come in and make their out the budget that I've put together whether it works for them or it doesn't work for them or what a crying shame it is that I kept this position or that expense, um, rather than dealing with it piecemeal. Uh, so if we can if we can reserve time at your next select board meeting on the 20th, we can deal with all of these together. Well, the, only, the only reason I brought it up tonight is that I had a, uh, a, a telephone conversation with you about this about a month and a half ago and we had agreed that it would stay in Mike's budget and then I see it in the building maintenance budget that's the only reason I'm bringing it up tonight it has nothing to do with heads of the heads of department I had asked specifically for this to be put back into the fire department budget and then it's not so that's that's the only reason I brought it up so just uh, David, uh, when you talk about having department heads come in front of the select board and, and the finance committee to kind of plead their case for, for cuts or, or decreases in, in line items, um, I think what you know, I'd like to do and I'm looking for feedback is 
only allow them a department head and department head only, not, not anybody else other than department heads to come in front of the select board and talk specifically about cuts or decreases only, not wish lists, not additions, not anything else, because frankly, we don't have the money or the time to devote to that this year due to the circumstances. And we don't need to go over line by line and rehash the entire budget. So that's kind of my thinking as far as addressing this. I know in the past, we've gone line by line and had people request additions, and all kinds of mess, and it took a long time. And I agree with you. It's just not, it's not a request for more money. It's just more money going back into the budget where it had belonged to begin with. No, um, I'm, I'm not talking specifically about you. I'm just saying once we get this kind of finalized, uh, you know, a yeah. little bit more where we want it, maybe next select where meeting, then the department heads could come and talk to us. That's all. Okay. And, and the other one tonight was, was the cell phone that I talked previously about. Um, the cell phone and cable uh, for emergency management were taken out of the fire department and not the police. And for some reason, just the fire department that should be put back into his line, not necessarily the landlines, uh, but the, at least the cell phones and cable should be in his uh, line item instead of, uh, I don't know, transferred to 190 if uh, David knows what that line item is. So the cell phone, the cell phone issue uh, for the fire and police should stay within their departments for emergency management. Okay. Um, David, can we talk about some of the other things that the finance committee brought up? Yeah. Um, could we talk? Uh, start with the the HR um, contract. So I th thought Amy actually made a fantastic argument um, and, and actually supported the reason why I think that we really need to continue to stay the course with Deb Radway coming in um, on a contract basis. I love the well, I shouldn't say I love, but in light of the circumstances, I think that um, it's very appropriate for there to be conversation um, around the biggest line items, and that is people. And I think everybody's very much committed to not having any layoffs. Um, but the union contracts are indeed expensive, and they have many, many, many uh, parts in them. And if if that's even going to be on the table, uh, Deb Bradway's got 30 years of experience sitting at the table and working on contract negotiations with unions. So, you know, I, I think that's actually an argument of having that skill set in house. Um, the other concern I have is if we're having tough times, um, you know, there are going to be a lot of people issues. And anytime that you have a situation where, um, you know, there's a lot of strife. The nerves are going to be frayed. Um, people are more likely to um, be under stress, and that doesn't always bring out the best employee relations. And the fact that we haven't had an HR director in large part is why we've had so many issues over the years that, in my opinion, and I think it's shared by many, have really cost the town money. When I think of some of the agreements that we've been, you know, made with employees where things just boiled over and then it got too late, I, I just think now more than ever is when we need a solid HR person. And I don't want to go back to having it kind of plug and play with Joan and David Nixon. They're going to have their hands full and their own right. So I just think that's something that that would really be penny wise and pound foolish at this point, you know, with, with Ed going out temporarily, we really need that slot. Would, um, <clears throat> as a compromise there, would you be willing to kind of put off the planner position until FY22 and just continue on the course with the, with the HR position and save the money for the planner? I think that eliminating one of the two would, you know, basically pay for the other. Um, 
or, and I think possibly the HR would be a little bit more valuable at this point based on just comments from the planning board and how the planner might, might or might not be used. Um, I know Bill's here, so he could probably speak yeah. to that a little bit, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from a priority standpoint, um, I would say given what we're faced with, there's it, in my mind that HR um, expertise is really critical right now. Um, as far as the planner goes, I think, you know, there are two different issues. One is what the planning board is asking for, which is really more administrative help. And I think the other argument is what, you know, I think, you know, Christian made a strong argument at the last meeting to what we think the town needs. Um, and, you know, I, I can totally understand why, you know, people are going to balk at, at bringing on another body, but I would certainly hope that it might be something that the board looks at maybe mid year if things aren't quite as um, dire you know, that that position would be looked at because what we're likely being going to be faced with is um, some businesses, let's face it, they're just not going to make it. And the commercial base that we have along Route 9 and elsewhere in town, we may need to get creative. Um, and you don't want to do that after all the businesses are shut down and then scratch your head, try to figure out what zoning you want in place. You want that to be a proactive process starting as soon as possible. So right. that, that's my argument on that one. But yeah, I mean, I think HR is really important. I just would want to say too, is I don't think we're mentioning anything about dipping into our reserve funds here. And I, I don't know what the balance is there, but I'm guessing it's over a million dollars in reserves. And if we're talking HR and um, a planner kind of being the points we're arguing over, Really, it's not that much money, even for a year. We're talking $150,000. I kind of feel like now, if any time is a rainy day, it's right now. And so we have that reserve fund. So why aren't we looking at that for trying to help promote some of these things that could really help the town in the long run, instead of, I guess, what Molly said is being penny wise and pound foolish. It's like, we don't want to cut all these things and then find out that we're behind the eight ball now and, and struggling to keep up when we could just dip into some reserves and pay for a few of these things and, and maybe reevaluate it in a little bit, but um, at least do something in the interim. But what, where, where, where did we get in this million dollars in reserve? Where did that pop up from? I think you're talking about stabilization. Is that what you're stabilization. About? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, you can't use stabilization for, uh, budget. Uh, stabilization has to be used for one-time purchases uh, of that nature. You don't use stabilization to offset your day-to-day um, -day operations and budget. So I, I, I want the numbers game. Sorry to interrupt. I mean, if, if we could use it somewhere else possibly and have money in the budget for these positions. I, I want to get to uh, Bill. I, I imagine he's got a comment about this. So go ahead, Bill. Okay, I think you have to unmute me on your end. Yep, you're unmuted. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, on the planner, um, I think it's fine to have an economic development planner. Um, I just want to, what the planning board has been asking for, that's not the help we're looking for at the first level. Uh, we're looking for for help in doing our current tasks. We do not have an economic development function at this time. We're pr primarily a zoning department. Um, we, we do the zoning bylaw, we do the permitting. Having a planner would not help with things like changing the zoning in the short run because changing zoning has to be done through town meeting which is a process that you know, it's a six months from start to finish at best. And we're pretty good at moving it quickly, but if you wanna have an economic development planner, that's fine. That's a different conversation than responding to the planning board's request for support. Mm -hmm. I I, I see what you're saying, Christian, about paying for, you know, things that we need out of stabilization, but I just, 
to me, the, in my mind, the priorities are keeping what we have at this point. And then, you know, in order to do that, if we needed to go dip into stabilization to pay for things in order to avoid layoffs or avoid service cuts, that, that in my mind is, is understandable. You know, paying for one-time charges out of stabilization so no one has to be let go. Uh, but I'm a little bit concerned about paying for things so that way we can incur new expenses. I mean, the, um, the HR person, you know, Ed's gone, so we don't have his salary that's being paid there. So, so basically that's, you know, it, it comes out pretty, pretty much even or, or close to it. Um, but the planner is a, a concern of mine. I'm not saying we don't need it, but, um, and Paul, Paul from uh, finance has a comment. Yeah, it's my, am I unmuted? Yeah. Yeah. It was my understanding that we do have to pay a certain amount of Ed's salary, at least at the beginning. Um, some, I think it's a difference between what he gets in the military. So there is a line item in the budget for that. No, right. sir. Um, I have a, a, um, a salary in the military that exceeds uh, what oh. I get from the town of Hadley. So. Okay. Um, I thought, I thought we there, there, are, there, there is money allocated because... Um, <clears throat> Uh, the the date's a little bit up in the air, so there's a a, a potential for me to, to work during the fiscal year is kind of what it boils down to. So okay. there's four months allocated for me to work, depending on the length of, de of the deployment, and then um, you know hopefully a month of overlap with Deb, or at least a couple of weeks. I don't know that that will happen, um, but then also um, you know to have her have uh, a good nine to ten months um, in the position. So that's really what it's all ultimately funded for at the end of the day. I believe one of the suggestions last night when we were talking was the idea of possibly going back to Deb to see what, if we restricted her to representing, you know, the discussions with the unions and the contracts and so on that were coming up, if there would be some savings there. You know, our, our concern is we think David's done a great job with trying to trim the budget and trying to look for things that we could live without. I think some of the budget uh, items that some of the, um, chairs have put through, you know, to reduce things, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. But we're also concerned that what if we're wrong and this gets worse and worse and what can we do to prepare for the worst without having to plan on using our reserves because we may need the reserves in another year. We just don't know how bad this is gonna be. We don't know whether the feds are gonna help the states and whether the states are really ultimately gonna even have the money to help the towns. And so that's our concern. And while all the businesses in our area are looking at draconian cuts, you know, um, or going out of business. Um, we're, we're just trying to be as conservative as possible while reserving and keeping, preserving the, the level of employment that we have for all our people. So anything that we can prioritize to reduce new hires or how we're gonna expend that money is in, in our mind is something that should be looked at very carefully. So that's going just let's talk about the big picture a little bit. Okay, so I'm going back to my, uh, plan that I put together, uh, defense in depth, that um, I anticipate a very bad first and second quarters for FY21. But let's say that I'm wrong and that it's actually going to be three or four or even multiple years of, of, of economic downturn. Um, the defense in depth is uh, set up in order to take into account ever worsening situations. Using stabilization should be our absolute last resort or using the current balance of stabilization as our last resort. Um, for FY21, we're actually adding to stabilization by something on the order of $200,000 in anticipation of having to need to use that in FY22. Um, similarly in 22, we're adding to the reserves in order to um, have enough reserves in, to use for 23 if they need them. Um, so that's what defense in depth means is that we are thinking not only how do we balance for today, but what, what can we do to reinforce our stabilization fund and other funds for the future. So in case we need them at that point. So, uh, just want to give you the, the larger context to which to frame your comments. I, I do think that's important because, I mean, there's already talk of UMass not returning in the fall, uh, doing things online. 
So there goes all our, you know, meals yeah. and hotel occupancy taxes and, and, and everything else along with it. Um, so I, I hate to be, you know, all negative, but I think we kind of have to plan as if that money won't be there for next year as well. Yep. Um, you know, that, uh, Molly's suggestion of possibly, you know, making the decision to, uh, keep on, uh, Deb Bradway that to go ahead with that contract and hold off on the planner, I think is a great compromise. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but I thought that was a great idea. It, you know, put that off for another year. And then, you know, when we see where we are, um, I, I also, I'll mute out and let you guys talk. I also did want to make a point. There's, you know, there's also a chance that I could not deploy, you know, I could break a leg in training, get in an accident, you know, possibilities are endless. Um, and, and then let's say I have to come back to work coming off active duty would also be a disservice to the town. So there's, there's also that legal consequence as well. And I, I still have the position that I feel like it's valuable to try to invest some in the town and look for other opportunities. I think that we have a, a long road ahead of us and that we need help trying to navigate that path. And I do think it's worthwhile for us investing um, in some staff that's gonna help us get there because right now we don't have anybody really to um, do things in the long run. I think once we hire a new town administrator, David Nixon will have some time to do some grant funding and look for opportunities um, in that time frame while he's still here working with the town. But then after that, we're gonna be back to where we are now and we're not gonna have people dedicated to looking at ways that we can invest in the town and look for grant opportunities and all those things. So I'm going to stick on that side, but I understand where you guys are coming from too. Well, and I guess, you know, going back to one of the things I heard was um, OPEB. Um, you know, OPEB's a savings account. OPEB is, uh, is very appropriate for us to be doing what we've been doing. Um, but again, we are years in front of so many other municipalities. Um, you know, I, I would rather see more effort put into kind of the, the planning side of things that is going to have long potential long term ramifications of revenue generation for the town. Um, we missed one year of OPEB contribution. I don't think that our bond rating is going to hell in a handbasket. If our bond rating goes down, it's because Standard and Poor's is going to downgrade just about everybody because of economic conditions. And that's not going to be our fault. I agree. I, I'd like to, you know, put off with the planner for right now, at least uh, until the fall um, and see where we are with our budget um, and go from there. I think going into the next July through October, uh, if we can get a better handle on uh, what our expenses are going to be or what our surrounding, as David said, uh, our cash cow there with no schools coming back here, uh, it is gonna make a big difference in our budget. So I would be in favor of keeping the HR person and holding off on the uh, planner for right now until the fall. Take a look at it then. Can we, is there a way to kind of make a list of priorities if, um, you know, what we would like to do come fall town meeting if, things are not as bad as, you know, we think they might be, but at the same time, budget and plan as if we're just going to basically hold level services and, uh, you know, with things. Um, I know that there's, you know, some people are getting 2% raises, other people are looking for 5% raises. And I just think that, you know, I think what Amy mentioned is, you know, 2% across the board is reasonable for, um, you know, non-union employees that don't have a contract. Um, but, you know, if we're going to give any raises at all, but, but some of these large increases that are requested, I just, I don't think this is the year, um, and I know I'm going to hear about this afterwards, but <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of, fair. yeah, I think there's a lot of mixed. I don't think anybody at this point should even consider asking us for a 5% increase right now. Um, 
I don't think that's fair to everybody else. If we can do do it equally for everybody, I think that's it's a lot fair uh, if we're going to do anything at all. Ed's going to be able to go and uh, negotiate with the uh, unions. Um, I spent a considerable amount of time reading the union contracts the other day, Amy, um, and I'll double check, but I don't recall seeing any with more than a two percent raise in the union contract. Uh, some were actually lower than two. Some were one and a half percent. Um, I was I was thinking that also. You're breaking up. I don't know if you said something. I'm sorry. Okay. So, any other? Uh, Can I say something about OPEB. Yep. The uh, in a uh, uh, budget down the road, is there's a. I don't know if it's me, but I'm de everyone's definitely going in and out. Nah, that's that's a Amy's connection's bad. She's north of us, and we have a bad connection too. Really? Yeah. Linda, you had a comment. Um, I uh, just to address what uh, Molly had said about uh, and pull a couple of things together. Um, OPEB. Um, someone said it shouldn't that not to use stabilization for budget. I agree with that. It's a capital. I would like to say point out that OPEB is actually capital. So it would be if you're going to use stabilization for anything, moving it over to OPEB would actually be appropriate. And then saving something else in the budget that might have been directed towards, if we can pull this back, we'll put it into OPEB, that it be put in somewhere else, that we could actually go capital to capital with, with, with OPEB. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I, I actually, I'm not certainly looking for full funding of it. But I think it was Amy that said earlier on that um, as sort of a good faith, yes, we're still on the plan, we're still in the program, we're still making the contributions, we're not going to make the 270,000, but I would, I would not like to see it come back to zero because it's hard to get out of the hole of zero. I would like to see us put something, I'm think, in my mind, I'm thinking like 25,000 is a good, good faith effort that we are saying we're still in this. Um, we still want to protect our rating. We still are planning for the future, but we had to set it back to 25,000 in this year of extreme circumstances. And if it needs to come out of capital rather than another part of the budget, I still think it's actually worth it. So even though I would not want to see a stabilization used for the basic operating budget, I think using a portion of that for OPEB and sparing uh, another uh, budget cut going into that direction is probably uh, appropriate. And not to mention the fact that you can take it out of cash and buy in a down market, Linda. And we have. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> we put a good chunk in in March and I'll say, I'll, oh, and then we had a $100,000 uh, $100, gain in one month. We lost over a hundred in one month and then you didn't hear anything from me from that month, but I will tell you we have gained most of it back and that is also including a portion that we put in when it was low. So we've actually done pretty well off the market because OPEB was the only large capital account that we saw a loss. We didn't see a lo loss in our other, our, cap our uh, CPA and our uh, stabilization, we actually saw gains because a lot of those are in government bonds and notes mm -hmm. and um, those even in a down market, we're doing very well. So as far as our capital accounts, we're in good shape. So what do we want to do for, for raises? Do we want to talk about this? Do we want to cap them at 2% across the board? Do we want to... 2% would be fine, but did, did anybody else see in the uh, materials that we got um, on David's uh, points of, about if uh, free cash to be put in certain places and uh, anything over, he had about $520,000 that he was uh, aiming to put into stabilization. Uh, did anybody else see that with uh, leftovers on certain budget items? And David can chime in. I saw where there was about Five hundred twenty thousand dollars earmarked for stabilization. Is is that am I was I right in seeing that, David? That's right. That's part of the strategy of defense in depth of uh, reinforcing your reserves 
whenever you possibly can in anticipation of needing those reserves in the future. So, so would, that be, would that be a thing where we could put partially some of that into back into stabilization and uh, maybe put some of it into OPEB or um, other things that we were, were looking at when I was looking at that and it still had in there 270 for uh, the OPEB and now it doesn't sound like that that's a feasible thing for us to do, but why couldn't we take some of that money that you were planning on as Linda suggested and putting something um, into OPEB uh, instead of the 520 into stabilization, but putting something uh, into OPEB on that, on that money. If we're going to do that, I would recommend that we do that at the fall town meeting rather than the, the annual. We simply don't know what's going to happen. And you may find that you need every bit of those reserves at the fall town meeting. Okay. But I want to make sure I wasn't seeing what I wasn't supposed to be seeing, but I did, I did see that, correct? You did see that as a okay. very clever and wise uh, putting away of uh, reserve, uh, money into reserves for in anticipation that you're going to need to use those reserves and therefore that you're in a situation where you're not depleting the reserves, but ever building reserves and then uh, spending out of them as you need them. Okay. Thank you. Molly and Christian, what do you think about the 2%? Because I just want to get that issue out of the way as far as uh, budgeting. I, I would just say, for me, I would just say, let's review the contracts. Where do we have a conflict that it's more than that? Is there? I don't quite know where the 5% is coming from. Is that in somebody's contract or just a request? I, I would also be happy with just saying maximum 2% unless the contract is lower or something like that to make it easy. Yeah, I agree. With that. I'd have to look at individual contracts, but I don't think there's an individual contract with a 5%. I believe that was a one-off individual request that um, was deferred. I believe it was deferred in an executive session, but I had to double check the minutes. Uh, but based on the faces you all made, I, I don't think you're in favor of that. And obviously with the conversation now, um, uh, you know, definitely not in favor of it. So um, I can look back at all the contracts and, and see who has more than a 2% raise and uh, talk to that individual about uh, their willingness to um, amend that for FY 2021. Paul had something. <laughs> Yeah, just I think last night it came up. I think it was either water, sewer, or or highway that um, that there was a cup that the raises were higher than two percent. I think that was the only place where it came up. I think, and and I think David said it was a union contract thing. So that may be some place just to check. But that's my recall. And Chief Mason had something as well. Uh, are we talking about union contracts with this the two percent cap, or are we talking about employment contracts for single employees? Now, I was referring to non-contract employees that okay. did, that didn't have a union contract because I know that there's, um, you know, we we typically do the union raises and then we do some sort of cola or or, or raise for town hall employees and, and other people that don't have contracts. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, just because you know, in dealing with union issues and talking about caps and things that are already negotiated, we're going to get into the weeds as far as labor practices go. Um, you know, just right off the top. Yeah, I mean, if Ed can work something out with them, great. But uh, my my faith in that happening is not <laughs> very good at this point. So, well, I mean, you know, you, there's certain departments. Like, just to give you an example, I I went over and I sat with David Nixon uh, this past week, and so as with this with the defensive line strategy that he's been talking about and what everybody I think wants to make sure the bottom line is that we keep employees um, you know I made reductions in several other lines where we really can't afford to make reductions to ensure that the officers get what they negotiated so I'm walking into F, the next fiscal year the seven thousand dollar decrease in the budget as we stand while making sure that they get what they negotiated so you know you have departments like that out there that hopefully can sandbox like that but i also don't want to pit uh you know unions against each other either because there's some departments that probably can't do that right and and, and my concern is there seems to be people that are 
asking for raises or expecting raises and then asking for lots of wish list items and budgets on top of that, which just, I don't see it happening. Yeah. Year. Those are all gone from my, my budget. Those were right off the top. Gone. And if I could, if Annie McKenzie, if, if I could just, I think I'm hearing you folks correctly. I just don't want anybody who's watching to hear something that is not being said. So, so if I'm wrong, correct me, because I'm not trying to state my position. I just don't want anybody freaking out and might be watching and who might have a negotiated union contract. So I don't hear you as saying that the select board completely acknowledges that everything they do will be in accordance with fair labor practices and that nothing would ever occur unilaterally without impact bargaining where it was warranted. Is that an accurate statement? I just don't want anybody listening to this and getting the impression you've said something you haven't. Yeah, That's Con true. contracts are contracts. We're gonna abide by them unless we can negotiate something else. If we can't negotiate something else or get some concessions, then the, the existing contracts will stay. So David, fair labor practice, that's all you have to say. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so so what's what's next? What do we wanna go on? Or what's our course of action here? Are we gonna focus on a little bit more between finance and uh, the town administrator and then bring this back next week or next meeting, I should say, to uh, speak with department heads or how are we going to tackle this? If there's any, I would like to say if they had any issues that they would kind of resolve them be in the, within the next two weeks, um, department to department, uh, having either to talk to David or finance and uh, bring it back to us as a clean go for next in a couple of weeks. Can we, let's uh talk about you know it, who's going to come in front of the select board and the finance committee again is it going to be some a department head that disagrees with a unanimous decision by the town administrator and the finance committee uh do you know if, if the finance committee and the town administrator can't agree on something do we talk to them i just don't want to have everybody in, in front of the select board and taking up a lot of time can i just ask uh, the finance committee what their schedule is for reviewing this revised budget are you guys done with your review or are you taking it in increments we hold on one second yep amy you're there good yeah can i uh, i'm not sure if I, you can hear me but the, it, we were done right now um talking to all the departments but this had come out so we thought you know, we met yesterday, we wanted to hear what you had to say today, and we would probably uh, schedule another meeting um, to go over this again, and then meet with you again. I don't know if you heard me. <laughs> We're all brain dead, but yes, that sounds fine. Would it, okay. would it would it be helpful if I took the budget and made the changes that we've discussed last night and tonight? Um, and uh, we can uh, use that as a base budget for discussions on the 20th. And those changes would be the uh, planning board position uh, for economic planner that we would defer that for one year. Uh, that we would add back into the planning board the administrative support. Uh, that we would uh, scrape together whatever we possibly can and put that into OPEB. Um, and that uh, OPEB views the contracts and tells us where we have a greater than 2% increase in any of the contracts. And then we discuss what to do about that. Uh, the only other wild card out there right now that we have any control over is the fuel bids which are due on may 18th and given fuel prices we may get a lucky bounce out of those and i may be able to adjust the budget so that whatever savings we get from fuel costs we can put that back into opeb i think we should jump on the fuel prices right now absolutely uh, Dan Zadonik had a, a comment that he wanted to make on revenue. Dan. Hi. Uh, at the financial management team last week, I brought up a question that I think the board kind of needs to clarify. 
it's the, the keeping the, the tax rate the same for next year. I'm under the impression you want to keep the average tax bill for the average person the same for the average house. As opposed to raising the two and a half percent that we can that we can raise additionally, which is another 290,000. The budget that David's got here has that 290 in it. Yeah, I, that my take on it is, is the opposite. I would like to see the rate, the 278, I believe is what it is for FY20, remain the same for FY21. Um, I know that depending on what happens with house values and whatnot, you know, that may be a, a decrease, I don't know, or it could be a slight increase depending on how house values shake out. Um, but I think that being able to say that, look, we kept the rate the same, we made the cuts and the changes that we need to will go a long way for people that don't have jobs at this point. Well, the preliminary information that we have for the study that I've done, we're looking at about a 5% jump in value based on last year's sales. So adding in the, the two and a half percent, the tax rate would go from 1278 to uh, 1252. So it would go drop, down. it would go down, but the average bill would go up about $120. Mm -hmm. Because you've so, got that, that increase in value. Yeah. So offset. I guess for somebody like, like Molly that knows about this stuff a lot better than, than I do or the, the, the finance committee, uh, what's better for a long-term setup? Do we want to, you know, drop the actual rate like that or keep the actual rate the same? Or what are, what are we trying to, okay, what's, what's best in the long term? Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't think that there's any question if we tried to keep everything level with these assessed values that we have little or no control over. Um, we're, this conversation is going to get a lot harder. Um, and I, I actually thought that this tax rate itself, even with um, what was going on, was staying the same. I didn't realize it was dropping down 20 cents or whatever. Um, David Nixon, did you know that it was dropping? Oh, we don't know that it is dropping because this is something that's going to be uh, decided in the fall town meeting because we need to wait for the assessors to get the valuations approved by the Department of Revenue. Right. Uh, you know, so that's one variable among many, many, many other variables. So if uh, keeping everything, uh, assuming everything else is even, then there is a possibility that the tax rate would drop because the house values would increase. So, uh, yeah. But we, right. but we don't know that for sure at this time. Right. So we couldn't really plan for that anyway. But would you agree that if we tried to keep the tax bills level, that that's a whole nother ball game? I think then you set yourself up for a double increase this time next year. Exactly. You're more likely than not to set yourself up. Again, there's so many variables no yeah. to say with precision. So then we should be aiming to keep the rate the same for now and then just see how the rates end up coming back from the Department of Revenue. Is that what we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Looks that way. Yeah. That's what I would say right now is the pass with the budget that you think is most responsible now, and then we will make the adjustments so we have to, uh, in the fall, given better information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, uh, that answer Dan's question then? Yes. Okay. Right, and so just out of curiosity, looking at the rates in the past, it looks like I'm looking at, God, I don't know what page of this uh, budget amended, there was a significant drop in rates in 2004 to 2006. Mm -hmm. um, so we could be looking at something like that. Who knows? But it looks like in the past, the rates have dropped quickly. Yeah, before my time, so I couldn't speak to that with precision. 
Can I just make one quick comment? It's Sue Glowatsky. Um, so whereas we didn't have um, override type votes the last time around, that's why the rate would drop so much. Correct, Dan? Uh, yeah, there's no new, as far as I know, there's no new increase in taxes due to new override money, but the rates would go down because right now we're at our maximum levy. Right. And if, values and go up, if values go up, the rate has to drop or we'd be in violation of two and a half and DOR won't approve our tax rate. And there's debt coming off as well. Uh, I don't believe there's any override debt that that number is not going down. Not in the next 12 months. Okay. Just wanted to ask the question. Okay, so do we know what we're doing now? Uh, finance is gonna work on this some more with David and then um, whatever can't be worked out between finance and the town administrator, the department heads can come back in, in front of the select board um, and kind of plead their case. But uh, I, I'd like to see that if, you know, if they disagree with both uh, the finance committee and the town administrator, I don't really wanna hear that case because uh, I, I mean, that's just me, but what does everybody else think? It depends what it is. I mean, I don't want many, many, you know, minute things to come back to us, but if it's, it's something that they think should be in their budget or whatever, I think, you know, we should hear it, but I'm hoping it'll just get settled, settled between finance and David. And I say that we uh, appoint the chair as the tiebreaker under situ situation. <laughs> I'll second that. That sounds good. Just email the chair all of your complaints. That's all. <laughs> there you go. They're already rolling in. It's okay. <laughs> Do not increase the taxes. That's what you're hearing. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on. Um, fire station, library, and senior center updates. Good night. Go ahead. Yep. Just wanted to say good night. Good night. Uh, Michael. Good, good night. Thanks. Good night, Chief. Uh, I think that's it for HR2. If you need me, though, text me. I'll come back on. All right. Good night, Ed. Night, Ed. Good night, Ed. All right. So, uh, Fire Station, Library, and Senior Center. Who wants to go first? Uh, I could go. Okay. You want me to go? Sure. Okay, so we had some change orders, uh, which we voted on uh, prior to. I think they're just going to need some uh, signatures. Uh, PO change number 20, that was the range hood uh, that we had voted on. Um, that was 823. Uh, propane fill, we filled up the tanks. That came to $4,448.22. So that'll need a signature also. That's PO uh, number 34, we had a motorized damper that they had to install that was $2,897 as PO change order number 36. And we approved these through the uh, finance because they were under 10. Um, additional electric work had to be done in that uh, uh, area of uh, the desks and all of the equipment that's going to go in there that came to 1785 and that would be change order 26 r1 and that was that and then they've gone out to bid for the uh setup for the desks and things like that in the uh, uh main office room there so that's gone out to bid because it's over over 10. and that's it everything is moving along uh if you drive by, it's looking pretty good. We have a final completion date for July 13th. Uh, remaining balances of today was uh, $451,200. Uh, we are looking at a couple of other things uh, about putting conduits in uh, so that we can run lines from center to up there. Uh, so that may be something that we'll look at um, before this project is done. We're, we're getting some prices on that right now. Um, 
because of Mount Warner and that tower up there. It seems to block, as you can tell with Amy and uh, Linda, uh, it's not a good uh, setup for communication. So we're looking at how we can rectify that in this by running some conduits uh, up that way. So I'll bring that forth at that time, okay? Joyce, did you need a motion for any of those changes or are you, they're good because you got them all passed through finance? Correct, and they're all under 10, yes. Okay. So we're all good on those. Uh, we will have to have one when the uh, change order for the, uh, uh, what do I want to call it, council uh, things in the- uh, uh, Dispatch. Yes, dispatch area, thank you. I've got a brain going here. Um, so that will come through to us in a, in a little while. We'll have to approve the, um, um bid document on that and that's it everything looks good they're going to be lining and paving and sidewalks and finishing up the doors are on um so everything seems to be moving right along uh as are the other buildings also so looking good all right library uh library so we have a library building committee meeting uh this coming monday um so i don't really have much new information after um, they were uh, in front of the select board last week, you know, getting an update there. So uh, David Nixon, I don't know if you've heard anything different. Um, when I went by, they were still working on the tidying up the roof and everything and making it airtight. Yeah, they're all green go. Everything is full systems ahead. Yeah. So nothing new on change orders or anything like that at this point. Okay, and Jane from the Senior Center. Oh, you're muted. There you go. There, yeah, okay. Yep. Senior Center's doing fine. Um, they're doing grading, final things are happening. We're looking at a CO on the 18th of May, possible move date of the 20th, and take our need to have most holy redeemer out of the cost of the town and moving right along. It's looking exciting. Okay. Uh, let's go down to, uh, I'm gonna pass over the marijuana uh, line item here or budget or uh, agenda item, I should say. Uh, let's do the end of year accounting and other financial matters. David, are we, what do we need to do here? All right, we don't need to do anything right now, but uh, this is an item that's going to be uh, showing up on your agendas for the next month and a half because we're in the final phases of FY20. Uh, we do have a new action plan for the end of the year for getting things done, free cash certified, all the, all the balances, end of year report, getting the audit done uh, early this year, all with the idea that, um, being able to uh, make the final borrowing in November. Um, it will require uh, strict adherence to deadlines having to do with reserves, expenditures, um, transfers, uh, encumbrances, uh, and other matters like that. And, and the, the tolerances are gonna be tighter than we've had to deal with in prior years. And so I'll work with the departments to make them understand that um, we need to be uh, thinking about deadlines and adhering to those deadlines in terms of paying invoices and incurring expenses and uh, making transfers uh, and uh, submitting revenues to Linda. Um, budget is still in good shape for right now through March. I haven't gotten the April revenue or expenditure report yet, but I'll get that uh, shortly. But uh, as of March, we were right on target for both expenditures and revenues. And uh, that's it for right now on that, on that matter. How about the uh, town administrator search update? Yeah, so MRI got in touch with me and they said that would we be at all interested in deferring the deadline for applications? Uh, right now, Monday, May 11th at 4 p.m. is the deadline. Uh, they do have applications in hand and I talked to at least two people who are gonna submit over the weekend. Um, 
But they're extend, asking if we extend the deadline to June 1st, some date beyond the governor's uh, order for that things be shut down until the 18th of May. That would give, um, potentially could attract more applications. Um, if we did extend it by three weeks, that means that we have a start date in August or September for the new town administrator. That means I can um, uh, achieve some savings in that line item. Uh, but it does mean that we would have um, less time for the transition for the, the overlap of the two town administrators. What's the pleasure of the board? I think it's a good idea to extend it a little bit. I just think given right now, a lot of people that might apply would are preoccupied with other things and we have a little bit of a buffer in our schedule. So I, I can make a motion that we move the, the, uh, the deadline to June 1st. I'll second that. Okay. Go ahead, Joyce. Go ahead. Yep. Whatever. We're in agreement. <laughs> yeah, but I think we should still try to get somebody on, um, you know, as soon as we can. I, th I think that's really important to still try to get them on board in August. And I would think if the deadline's June and they go through their screening and then the select board's doing their interviewing, that should still be a viable possibility. I agree. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I asked you to save a date in June for the interviews of the final candidates. And obviously we're, we're going to release that, save the date, because we'll have to reschedule that. It's like we're getting married. Save the date. Save the date. <laughs> All right, David. And uh, town administrator's report, anything you want to hit on? Um, I am touched on a lot of things. So let me pull it up here. Don't forget the alternate building is. Yep, we'll get that next. All right, so we touched on a lot of things that are on my report here. Um, we uh, are audit for FI 19 is substantially complete, and we are um, we are uh, reviewing draft documents, and it should be uh, we should have an audit uh, in your hands and the next uh, week or so. Uh, the MVP grant that we are submitting for a $300,000 grant for the priorities that were identified in the planning grant. So that is on, underway. We've got the two community block grants, one for 550,000 for housing rehabilitation. And the other one is whatever our share of 20 million is uh, going to be for emergency aid to the local businesses. And uh, let's see. And uh, the end of year report schedule A has been accepted by the Department of Revenue. So that project is substantially complete. And other than that, it's been the budget and uh, town meeting. Um, and, so that's all I've got right now. All right, and then so under items not anticipated 48 hours in advance, uh, Tim Nyhart, who recently retired, expressed his interest in uh, becoming an alternate building inspector. Um, and uh, the, the new building commissioner, Tom Quinlan, uh, would like to see that happen as well. So if uh, we could get a motion to appoint uh, Tim Nyhart as an alternate. So moved. Second. And any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, any announcements? No, I didn't do a good job this week. I have to be better prepared next next time. Okay. Uh, you can get asparagus in Hadley. <laughs> yes, you can. There are some stands that are open. Yep. All right. Anything else? No. Nope. Stay safe. Uh, Stay safe. Yeah. The, I guess Jennifer just brought it up um, May 16th, right? The election. 
Yes. Yeah. Very important. Let's, uh, I think it's not too late yet to record a uh, request an absentee ballot, is it? When's the, when's the cutoff? Today was the last day. Oh, okay, so it is. All right. And town meeting is still set for June? June 18th right now. June 19th, okay. 18th. 18th. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I just want to say one thing real quick, since uh, realizing the vote is May 16th, our next meeting is May 20th. I just want to thank Molly for her years of service on the select board. It's her last meeting tonight. Anticlimactic uh, end here that we're all on Zoom meeting and not in person, but thank you for all your work on the board and uh, everything you've done for the town. I just want to say, say that um, from everyone, I guess, but from me especially. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to miss like this. I'd like to say that too. I mean, we've had uh, quite a few number of years uh, together, that's for sure. Um, we've been you, between you and finance and school, we've all kind of hit each other one way or another, but these last few years have been uh, uh, enjoyable most of the time. <laughs> we have <laughs> we haven't always agreed, but that's all right. That's a it's the right to agree and disagree, right? That's right. Uh, and respect one another's decisions and views. And I think we've been able to do that. So um, you brought a lot of uh, different aspects to the town and uh, finance. I've been very grateful that you've been there financially for us to, uh, to get us through those times. So with your knowledge, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Molly. Thank you for serving on the select board. Thank you for hiring me. So you did that uh, six years ago. I appreciate you being a part of the board that got me to Hadley. So I couldn't be happier. So thank you for that. Thank you for being a great school committee member and an excellent and supportive select board person for the students and families of Hadley. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Annie. And I had to turn off the video because by this time at night on Zoom, I mean, stuff just really starts to fall apart. I don't know about the rest of you, but I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> So thank you, Molly, for your years of service. When I first met you, you were on the finance committee. I think you had just been appointed and mm -hmm. I was the new town administrator after a long tenure with Robin Crosby. And uh, it was a, an enjoyable experience working uh, with you on the budgets and uh, uh, way back in 2006, I think it was. Uh, and then working with you on the school committee and then working with you as a select board member. Uh, it's been a pleasure the entire time, all 15 years of it. Same here, David. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just want to say thank you again. I've said it repeatedly. Um, if people don't appreciate the municipal employees and volunteers, then they're not paying attention. It's what makes the town work. Um, and I know I've gotten a lot out of it. I've learned a lot. I'm sure everybody who's serving currently learns a lot. Um, it's amazing what we don't know when we wake up in the morning and the water just comes out of the faucet and it's a miracle, right? But um, so I've, I've certainly enjoyed the time and obviously you're not completely getting rid of me because I'll still continue in some capacity on some subcommittees. But uh, again, I hope, uh, I think honestly, you know, for the boards I've served on, the current composition of the select board's been great to work with. Again, eclectic mix of viewpoints, but people are very respectful of each other. And I'm very hopeful that after the election that that same camaraderie will continue, so. All right, so we going out for drinks when all this goes over, okay? I know, Joyce, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it, we will do it for sure. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, we'll see everybody back on uh, May 20th, 5.30 on Zoom. And uh, if I could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Or second, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all in favor. Bye. Bye. All right, good night. Good night, everybody. Stay healthy.